Assalamu alaikum. The uh, next thing after selecting um, an appropriate surgical needle for the job is to select the appropriate surgical suture. And the basis for selection will rest heavily on understanding different materials of surgical sutures because the materials will determine the properties of the suture in terms of its um, diameter, its tensile strength, its um, friction, and the way it interacts with moisture and water, when uh, and how would it get absorbed, and many other features. So this is what we're going to start with today. Different suture materials are required for different surgical uh, jobs. In this scenario, uh, a pectoralis major myocutaneous flap was brought to fill up the surgical defect in this area. So you need different sutures to suture the uh, muscular part of the flap with the rest of the subcutaneous tissue and suturing the skin of the flap, which, is a, um, which was brought from the chest with the face or with the neck would also require different types of sutures. You need also stay sutures to carry uh, the weight of the flap uh, and stay longer. And uh, you need also sutures that, that are appropriate to be used in an infected field, uh, not only to close the pharyngeal, the infected uh, pharyngeal defect, but also to bridge uh, the skin defect here. And you'll probably also need sutures to um, stabilize uh, things like drains or uh, suturing of tracheostomy tubes and so forth. You probably need seven different sutures for these two scenarios. Suture materials differ in their physical properties, uh, and the most important of this is the tensile strength, the amount of force required to uh, break the suture material. And if the suture uh, has a high tensile strength, you can afford to um, uh, use very small uh, diameters of the suture that would have enough uh, strength in it to hold the tissues until healing is finalized. The other property is how the um, sutures would not securely, because uh, some materials you would need to add a few more throws into the knot in order to keep it uh, in place and prevent unfolding. Some sutures are more elastic than others, particularly the synthetic materials. Um, nylon, for example, can extend more than 20% of its original length with some uh, uh, tension on it. Synthetic materials also have some memory, and this would, um, the memory is the tendency of the suture material to revert to its um, original shape and position. And you can use the, the suture materials either in a monofilament type or a multifilament uh, way, and we'll come to this. And they also differ in the way they interact with moisture and water, because some of the natural uh, materials uh, would degrade more quickly once in contact with water, uh, while all other, um, even, origin, even the natural material like cotton, would actually increase in strength uh, once they are wetted. The other aspect in which the suture materials um, differ is the way the sutures can be handled. Uh, and that's of importance to surgeons because uh, this is going to help in the knotting process. Uh, pliability refers to the way the uh, suture itself can, can bend easily. And also the friction of the uh, suture material because if the suture material has very low uh, friction, it can pass easily within the tissues with the minimum amount of, uh, of damage and friction. But on the other hand, uh, if, it passes if it has very low friction, then um, knot security um, would need to be um, uh, increased by putting on too many throws into, like for example, uh, proline. Top of the list of the optimal suture qualities is the tensile strength of the suture, because this will permit you to use uh, very fine sizes of uh, high 
um, tensile strength material. It's also useful if the tensile strength is retained while the uh, sutures are in vivo in contact with water and moisture because some um, some material degrade quickly once they are in contact with moisture. You want the material, uh, if, it's, if it's meant to be absorbed, to do this rapidly because uh, it's a, just a foreign body in the wound. We don't want it too rapidly before the tissue healing is finalized. You also would like to see a consistent uniform diameter of the uh, of the suture material, and this is usually achieved with the synthetic type of uh, of sutures. And if the sutures handles well and not easily uh, and securely, all the better. And of course, it should be free from irritating substances and sterile. The other important aspect of the suture material is, is tissue compatibility, the way it reacts with the tissues it's meant to hold. Uh, and ideally, of course, the um, suture material should be non-allergenic and non-carcinogenic and should cause minimal tissue reaction. If you look at the type of the tissue reaction, the inflammatory process surrounding a chromic gut suture, after a week of being inserted into the tissues, um, this this compared to the amount, the minimal amount of reaction caused by uh, a vicral repeat type of suture um, inserted again for a week or so. Sutures in the tissues act like foreign bodies, and some sutures are provided with um, a layer of antibacterial agent. Chloroxidine diacetate, for example, and there is good evidence that this helps in decreasing the incidence of uh, uh, wound infection. You could see the area, the zone of uh, microorganism inhibition surrounding the suture material for different types of microorganisms, including Staph aureus here and MRCA here. Uh, and if you look with a higher magnification, you could see that the suture, suture material that are not coated would harbor more uh, colonies of microorganism than uh, their counterpart if it is coated with antibacterial agent. The smaller the um, uh, suture diameter, the better, because this would decrease the amount of the foreign body within the tissue to decrease the irritation and contamination and also decrease the tissue trauma during the passage of big needles and big suture material. Um, but this, of course, depends very much on the tensile strength of the material. Uh, if you have high tensile strength, then you can afford to thin out the suture into a very fine uh, board diameter. The way the suture diameters are stated uh, is a bit weird because historically it started with um, sutures of about 0.4 millimeters in diameter. That was the smallest possible, historically, that was the uh, smallest possible uh, suture size. Uh, that's when uh, the natural fibers like gut and cotton and silk were used. And larger uh, suture size took different numbers, like two, three, four, and five. Um, but when finer calibers were introduced, then they gave it a zero. Um, uh, and that was about 0.35 uh, millimeters in diameter. And with the uh, introduction of uh, better uh, material with higher uh, tensile strength, they would, the count actually started to reverse to the other way around. The smaller the um, diameter, um, the larger the number of the zeros you have. So it actually works up from here, from the zero uh, down to about 0 0.01 millimeter, and that's the 11 zeros. Uh, most of the surgical work is done by about by the three zero which, which is about 0.2 millimeters 
you do cosmetic skin sutures with an 0.1 millimeter suture size that's the 50 and you do anastomosis of uh, nerves and things like micro anastomosis with a much finer uh, caliber with 0.02 uh, millimeter which is 10 zeros naturally we all uh, select our suture and material based on uh, the way we've been trained and our professional experience with different suture materials. Um, but obviously, due consideration should be given to the healing characteristics of the tissues being sutured, uh, a good knowledge of the types of the suture materials available, and also some patient factors like patients who are elderly patient or the morbidly obese or the uh, undernourished or diabetic patients, uh, you would also need to rethink about what type of suture um, because this affects the um, uh, healing processes and different tissues. You would need to rethink about what type of suture material you would need for this particular task. By way of simplification, suture materials can be categorized according to three characters whether the material is natural, like gut or silk, or synthetic, like polymers, and whether the suture material can be absorbed or would be absorbed within a certain uh, time window, or it would remain uh, inert in the tissues, and whether it's provided like a single filament or braided or twisted into multi-filament type of uh, suture materials. We'll go through these. Historically, surgery started with the use of natural uh, suture materials like silk or catgut. Um, they're still in use at a, a much smaller scale because they pr provoke a, a greater tissue reaction and also have inferior uh, tensile strength. And the synthetic products now available are made up of polymers of different substance including nylon and PTS and things of the like. They are more predictable in the way they behave inside the tissues and the way they lose their tensile strength or get absorbed. They have higher tensile strength, so you can use very fine diameters of these sutures and they can be provided like monofilament sometimes to ease the, their passage inside the tissues and they are definitely less irritant than their natural counterpart. The natural sutures that are still in use include uh, the gut sutures made up of purified collagen from the intestines. And they are no longer made from the cat gut, they are made from the uh, collagen and the intestines of sheep and cows. And uh, you can use the pure purified collagen, but it absorbs very quickly. So it's only used for uh, suturing subcutaneous tissue uh, in order to um, increase the uh, strength, decrease the irritation and decrease the absorption of the purified collagen. They are, uh, uh, they are coated with chromic acid. And this is the coated gut type of uh, suture and silk is also still in use, although uh, on a very uh, limited scale. Plain gut and chromic gut sutures get absorbed within weeks from their um, implantation into the tissues, uh, while silk is meant to be non-absorbable. Silk is still in use because of its superior handling uh, properties. Uh, they are second to none in the way they tie and handled uh, while they are um, uh, being knotted. They are provided as a twisted or braided multifilament um, and they have a fairly good uh, tensile strength for that reason. Um, but once inside the tissue, they are not actually non-absorbable. Uh, because within two years, most of the silk material uh, will be absorbed and would be no longer identified in the tissues. And, and perhaps more importantly, within the first year, half of the tensile strengths will be lost of that. So it's not really an unabsorbable suture. It's 
actually should be categorized like a very slowly absorbing suture rather than non absorbing and it shouldn't be used to uh, fix uh, processes and things like uh, of the like in the body because of the uh, loss of half of its tensile strength within a year and the whole of the tensile strength within two years synthetic sutures uh, which are mostly polymers don't cause uh, intense reactions inside the tissues and have much higher tensile strength and a very predictable degradation and absorption. They are provided in either an absorbable form that uh, gets ultimately absorbed out of the tissues like ficryl, monocryl, and PDS, or an unabsorbable form including proline and dacron and nylon. The third way of categorizing the surgical sutures is whether it is provided uh, as a monofilament or multifilament. Monofilaments have certain advantages. They have a very um, easy passage within the tissues. They have a very smooth surface uh, and that doesn't harbor much of the microorganisms. Um, they are mostly synthetic with high tensile strength. That's why they can be provided as single filament, uh, but they don't tie well because they retain some memory uh, and they tend to sort of spring after being uh, tied. They would want to retain their original position and shape. So the poor knot security is the real thing about monofilament and extra thaws would need to be uh, placed with every uh, knot with using monofilament type of sutures. On the other hand, the multifilament uh, type of sutures um, have higher have higher friction while passed within the tissues can harbor microorganisms in the uh, small cavities they have on the surface although they are mostly now coated and um, they should not be used in an infected wound or when infection is expected but they handle very well and they uh, tie very nicely Monofilament sutures should be knotted with care while you can uh, use the standard uh, square knot or surgical knot with the multifilament sutures. Um, if you are using monofilament uh, suture, uh, you would need to put on extra throws uh, to secure the knot because of the uh, material memory. The advantage of the monofilament sutures of uh, le the least uh, uh, amount of trauma to the tissue and least uh, harbors, uh, least or microorganism harboring on the very smooth surface uh, um, lends it to be used in things like vascular surgery where you don't really want any possibility of contamination. Um, the other thing about the monofilament suture is that because they are monofilament, um, any damage to the fiber, the thread itself, while, for example, clamping it, would cause uh, the tissues, the thread, to lose its tensile strength and break. So they should be handled with care, and if at all possible, you shouldn't be placing uh, needle holders on the uh, monofilament sutures. Uh, the examples, of course, include things like uh, monocryl and and nylon and proline and PDS. Multifilament sutures are either braided together or twisted and they offer more resistance in that while being passed inside the tissues but that's exactly why they handle very well because uh, they of the higher friction and they also need fewer knots because of that uh, property. Uh, the example include things like the vicryl, which is braided, a chromic gut, which is twisted, and silk, which is braided. Suture materials can be either absorbed or remain non-absorbable within the body tissues. The distinction is made uh, at the 60 days window. If, tissue, if the suture material loses its tensile strength within 60 days, 
then it becomes uh, it is categorized like absorbable suture even though you can still have some uh, suture material inside the tissues but if they have lost enough of their tensile strength they are no longer functioning if the uh, if the sutures retain most of its uh, tensile strength after 60 days then they are categorized like non-absorbable but as mentioned earlier, earlier, some of the suture materials that are categorized as non-absorbable non -absorbable sutures are actually a very, very slowly absorbing sutures like silk or nylon. Silk would lose about half of its tensile strength within a year. So although they retain enough tensile strength after 60 days, uh, this is not going to last forever. Within a year, they would lose half of its tensile strength and lose all the tensile strength at the end of two years. While nylon would lo lose about a quarter of its original strength within two years. Uh, so neither of them should be used for long-term placement of prosthesis or for vascular anastomosis. The rate at which the um, tissue material loses its tensile strength is different from the rate uh, which the tissue material are absorbed and cleaned completely from the wound area. These are two separate phenomena, the tensile strength degradation and the complete absorption of the tissues. Some uh, uh, suture materials would lose their tensile strength quickly within two or three weeks, but they would linger around in the wound for a much longer period after this while they are not functioning. They just act like a foreign body then. If you look into this diagram, you see that the um, tensile strength of the vicular rapide is lost very quickly. Within two weeks, uh, there is no strength at all in the suture, but it stays around in the wound for about six weeks, much longer than uh, the two weeks in which it had lost its tensile strength and is no longer supporting uh, the wound. Vicryl would take about four weeks to lose its tensile strength and would remain in the wound like a foreign body for about 60 days. The same applies to monocryl, although it starts at a high level of tensile strength. This is lost quickly within four weeks, but it stays in the wound for more than three months. Um, PTS uh, tissue mater uh, suture material loses its uh, tensile strength more slowly uh, and can actually be observed in wounds for more than 200 days. So tensile strength is usually lost uh, much earlier than actually um, uh, tissues are completely absorbed. The other important consideration is how much time does it take the particular tissue to heal because if the tissues can heal and regain some of their tensile strength within days, then you can afford to use the fast absorbing sutures like vicryl or gut. And then you could eliminate the danger of having foreign bodies quickly. Uh, whereas if tissues would need a longer uh, term support like tendons, that would need a few months before it regains uh, enough of its tensile strength, you need to support it uh, with suture materials like PDS that remains that regains most of its uh, tensile strength for a good few months. Uh, in some situations, like in, uh, like securing prosthesis in place or vascular surgery, you would need to use a, a non-absorbable suture that would um, retain most of their tensile strength for long. Uh, care must be taken uh, while uh, selecting absorbable sutures for in, in patients who are feverish or protein deficient or have active infection because the rate of absorption of the uh, of the suture materials and the degradation of its tensile strength may actually be accelerated so the wound may actually break down because of the rapid uh, decline in the tensile strength uh, also, with uh, absorbable sutures, particularly the natural ones, uh, wetting or moisting the sutures uh, can actually uh, start the uh, absorption process prematurely. So in general, the advice is don't wet uh, 
uh, the rapidly absorbing sutures, uh, you can moisten but never soak the surgical cut, keep the silk dry. Uh, you can wet only the linen or cotton threads. That's in a very limited use nowadays because that actually increases rather than decrease its strength. You'll have to uh, be careful while bending the stainless steel wire type of sutures because this is going to decrease its tensile strength uh, dramatically um, while if you are using nylon threads it's good practice to draw the nylon threads between the gloved fingers to remove some of its memory so, so we come to the end of this presentation on the uh, suture materials and the next presentation will be on the absorbable uh, surgical sutures Assalamu alaikum